Shalom and welcome to Inside the Times and Seasons, a linguistic analysis of the names of the appointed times of Yahweh. Today we are beginning Yom HaKippurim, which is the Day of Atonement, the sixth of the feasts of Yahweh. The Colonel says Hebrew is a dense language for dense people. If you've been following along with us, you know that there are several ideas behind the dense language, that the letters each make a picture, and the pictures together give us a meaning to the word. The idea that there's a system of related roots is what we're focusing on here. And also the grammar of the language compresses many ideas into a word unit, and we're covering that in a different series. We have no comment on a dense people. Yom HaKippurim is uh, cited in Leviticus 23:27 in the context of the Feast of Yahweh. It is called the Day of Atonement, and it is also known as the Day of Judgment. The word for atonement always appears, almost always appears in the plural in the Hebrew, even though it uh, almost always appears in the singular in the English. The word for atonement was generated for the English translation of the Bible, and it comes from the idea of being at one, and we're going to see some meanings that mean reconciliation. We always want to remember that every festival occasion is considered to be a remembrance of the exodus from Egypt. The root for Kippurim is kafar, it's Strong's 3725, and it's translated consistently as atonement. Exodus 29:36, And thou shalt offer every day a bullock for a sin offering for atonement, and thou shalt cleanse the altar, and when thou hast made an atonement for it, and thou shalt anoint it to sanctify it. Exodus 30:16, And thou shalt take the atonement money of the children of Israel, and shall appoint it for the service of the tabernacle of the congregation, that it may be a memorial unto the children of Israel before Yahweh, to make an atonement for your souls. The root kafar has a broad range of meanings, but they all go back to the idea of covering. So when we make atonement, we cover our sin, to cover uh, with pitch or with tar. A bribe will cover a wrongdoing, maybe not in a positive way, to give a ransom or redemption money to cover a sin or to cover some problem that reconciliation can be made. The first mention is in Genesis 6.14 in the story of Noah's Ark. Make thee an ark of gopher wood, rooms shall thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without pitch. So here's the picture of Noah totally covering the inside and the outside of wood with tar or some water resistant surface. Psalm 49, 7, none of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. In Isaiah 6, 7, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. In Daniel 9, 24, Seventy weeks are determined upon the people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Amos 5.12 For I know your manifold transgressions and your mighty sins. They afflict the just, they take a bribe, and they turn aside the poor in the gate from their right. By extension, the idea of covering, we have a meaning for kafar, which means a village, and behind that idea is that a village can cover the people, it can protect them from what's going on outside. Song of Songs 711, Come, my beloved, and let us go forth into the field, let us lodge in the villages. Another meaning is camp fear, and you can see that this actually is a Hebrew word. It has the same phonemes in it, k, f, and r. The m just elides into the uh, f sound, camp fear. And this is an old name for henna, and henna is also used for covering. 
We see in some cultures very elaborate henna designs that are uh, put on maybe the hands of the bride or maybe even consistently as some adornment on women. It's used to cover your hair color and even your fingernails as a dye. In Song of Songs 114, my beloved is unto me as a cluster of camphire in the vineyards of En Gedi. By extension, another meaning is kafir, which is a young lion who has learned to hunt his own food. And the idea is that once he's old enough to do that, he's old enough to cover and protect the uh, pride of lions, the group. Psalm 34, 11, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek Yahweh shall not want any good thing. In Hosea 5:14. For I will be unto Ephraim as a lion, and as a young lion to the house of Judah. I, even I, will tear and go away. I will take away, and none shall rescue him. Another word from this root is kafor, which means hoarfrost, the frost that's on the ground when you get up in the winter morning. It can also mean a cup from the idea that it's covered with a lid. Exodus 6.14, And when the dew that lay was gone up, Behold, upon the face of the wilderness there lay a small round thing, as small as the hoarfrost on the ground. And this is, of course, talking about the manna that the Israelites found. Psalm one hundred forty seven sixteen He giveth snow like wool, he scattereth the hoarfrost like ashes. And so again the idea of covering. The caporet, which is translated either as mercy seat or atonement cover. This is the cover that was on the Ark of the Covenant that had the cherubim on it. Exodus 25, 18, And thou shalt make two cherubim of gold, of beaten work shalt thou make them in the two ends of the mercy seat. Numbers 789, And when Moses was gone into the tabernacle of the congregation to speak with him, then he heard the voice of one speaking unto him from off the mercy seat, that was upon the ark of testimony from between the two cherubim, and he spake unto them. So again, clearly this is the idea of covering the ark. It, it is the cover for it. We're going to look at some cognate roots, and cognate roots are words uh, that are related to each other by uh, linguistic rules of sound shift. We see in the first example of a related root, kaf bet resh, where the pe is substituted by the bet. And these are letters that are considered to be labials. They're made with the front of your mouth, with your lips, p, f, and they switch back and forth. Uh, in languages, you might be familiar, for example, uh, people who speak Spanish, they don't really have a b and a v, like a b and a v but those letters are uh, frequently interchanged. And the v and the f, the difference between those two are just whether you use your voice or not. So let's go ahead and look at these related roots. From kaf bet resh, we have a word kavir, which means mighty or powerful from the idea of being multiplied. And this is related to the idea of covering, um, we'll see in some other words, but as things are multiplied on, upon each other, then it can cover something up. Here it means mighty. Uh, Job 36.5, Behold, God is mighty and despiseth, despiseth not any. He is mighty in strength and wisdom. Isaiah 17:12 Woe to the multitude of many people which make a noise like the noise of the seas and to the rushing of nations that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. And this is actually the same root when you hear um, the Muslims say Allahu Akbar that's related to this Kabir. Kabir means great. Akbar means greater than. Uh, unfortunately for uh, Arabic speaking people, Akbar in uh, Hebrew means mouse, so you can take that wherever you want to. Makhbar is a lattice work from the idea of multiplying uh, 
like a weaving kind of a multiplying, it, it makes a lattice work for either sifting or winnowing. In Exodus 39, 39, the brazen altar and his grate of brass, his staves and all his vessels and labor and his foot. So we see the idea of a lattice work, a grate, so that all the ashes can go through the uh, where the meat is being uh, burned. In Job 36, 31, it has more the idea of the abundance. For by them judgeth he the people, and giveth meat in abundance. He multiplies it. Another root, uh, if we substitute the kuf for the kaf, and they're both the same sound, uh, we get kever, which means a grave, or uh, the verb to bury. Exodus 23, 4. I am a stranger and a sojourner with you. Give me a possession of a burying place with you, that I might bury my dead out of my sight. Isaiah 53, 9, And he made his grave with the wicked, and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Referring to Mashiach. Ezekiel 39, 13, Yea, all the people of the land shall bury them, and it shall be to them a renown the day that I shall be glorified, saith the Lord Yahweh. So clearly, anything having to do with burial has to do with covering something up. Another root is Gimel Peresh, and that's a substitution of the Gimel for the Kaf. And these two sounds are related. They're made in the back of the throat. The Gimel, G, is voiced, and the Kaf, K, uh, is voiceless. We get uh, gopher, which is not even translated, it's just simply transliterated uh, as gopher wood, and it was believed that this kind of wood was resistant to water. And again, we see it uh, right in the same verse with the pitch, with Noah making the ark. Genesis 6:14, make thee an ark of gopher wood, room shalt thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. Gafrit is also a word that's related to gopher, and it means brimstone or sulfur. The idea of covering is that a piece of wood would be covered in sulfur to make it more ignitable, and we use sulfur on our match heads even today. It's also used as a base for medicinal skin ointment so that you could cover your skin with this salve or this lotion uh, to let the medicine get onto your skin and into your body. Genesis 19:24. Then Yahweh rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from Yahweh out of heaven. In Isaiah 34:9, And the streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land sh thereof shall become burning pitch. So the idea of burning is associated with gafrit. 